Hey, let's put this back in this. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So welcome back to Urban Monk TV. Uh, Honda CX500, this one's a custom, but it really doesn't matter. The process is the same for uh, just about every version of this bike that is out there, and there's a lot of them out there. Um, we have done the stator. We replaced it with a new RM stator. And check out my video on that, and links to finding that part are in the description. And uh, we also replaced the mechanical seal on the water pump while we were in there. And just freshened up all the other seals on that back case of the uh, engine cover, the rear engine cover, I'll call it that. Um, let's get this thing back in. First step is to shift the transmission into gear. I'll get my floor jack ready. And in position. I remember exactly where I had this before. I should have marked it with some tape on my lift. I'm guessing somewhere around here. And then another thing I'm going to do is take these bolts out and get ready to receive the top hanger bracket. Don't mind this. This is something I was doing. Someone asked on Instagram what the distance is from here to here because they were doing a custom tank. So I was using that to measure it and uh, give him that information. ready with those. I'm going to keep one with the nut off just ready to stick in at um, an easy to grab place. So I wheeled my whole stand or workbench that I have the engine on over very close to where I got to do this work. Obviously the shorter the distance that I lift this engine the better and um, it helps to have wheels on your bench when you build something like this. So um, keep that in mind when you're building your little workbench. I'm going to grab this thing by here and here, I guess. I'm just going to get it as close to the front corner. As I can and I really want to think this through like what's my motion what happens to this bench as soon as I'm holding the weight uh, how do I get clear is something gonna get in my way no surprises you know think it through I say all that and we'll see how I get surprised <laughs> And it's going to be a balancing act once it's in. I'm guessing it's a hundred pounds or so. Okay. A little tough on the back. I also think I scratched the lens on my glasses. There's a surprise, right? There. Now I feel like I'm actually on. Yeah, I am. Great. Lining it up. The tricky thing now is going to be how do I move the camera 
<laughs> walk, I can't walk away from this thing. <clears throat> Let's just get that top bolt in. Oh, hooking up on something. Ah, starter. All right, so you want to be forward a bit. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship. And how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on urbanmonktv.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. The other thing I got to get is the uh, drive shaft hooked up to the final shaft on the engine as this goes in. And I'm hooking up on my starter again. Okay, I'm hooked in there. Let me move this. So this and this have to come together as the engine goes in. Then I want to tip this in to this location, kind of all at the same time. So final shaft and this are all happening simultaneously. I'm going to tip this down. The other thing that's going to help here is having the, the bike on the center stand so that the rear wheel is up and can rotate to get these splines lined up. Oh, actually, I think it's... I just have to pull the shaft forward. There we go. Lining up. Okay, so these two are together some now, and they will continue to come together. Now it's just a matter of bringing it into position. I think now that I've got this lined up, I'm going to put a bolt in there and use it as a pivot point because I don't want the rear of the engine to come up anymore. I want the front of the engine to come up. So this will essentially lock the, uh, the rear in place. There we go. That's one. Same thing on the other side. All right. So now with this pivot point locked on the back on both sides, now when I jack the engine, it'll bring these together and I can get one of the bolts in here. Okay.
And here's what I'm going to try doing. I gave it a little bit more on the jack below. There's no threads in here. So I'm just going to try to pry it back enough to get my bolt lined up, which I put right here. There. Now that engine is hanging in that frame. Okay, so I can't get this bolt in because I'm still rotated just slightly this way and not far enough back. And the problem is, I'm thinking maybe if I put in this rear bolt, well, yeah. I thought that I might actually end up changing the geometry of the engine slightly by doing that, but I didn't. It went in too easy to be making any change. What I really need to do is just move this back ever so slightly to get that bolt through. You know, and it'd be like a clamping kind of force here. I'm trying to think through how to go about doing that. So thinking about how I can have an effect on the you know forces on the top of this engine, I still have this bracket to put in on both sides. Perhaps working here will give me some leverage, uh, you know, and affect that bolt that I'm trying to get up on the front. And I noticed I forgot to clean those brackets beforehand, so I'm going to give them uh, a quick clean up here. I'm going to use this super clean degreaser that uh, I'm quickly becoming a big fan of. Rubber gloves with this. Nice. And then if you have any questions about how these go in, it's easy enough to line up the holes and see how the bottom of this is not lined up. But if I grab the other one, you know, clearly that's a much better lineup. So there's really only one way these things can go in. Another way to think of it is little tab forward. Little tab forward. Now, that's the ticket. Now perhaps as I tighten all this up, it will affect some change up where I need it. Hmm, still not there. Some of you may have noticed I put this big pry bar in here. This is gonna give me a handle. There's nothing to pry up on other than the bottom of the engine, which I am doing with the jack. I think this is a good time to, I've been sitting here struggling with this for a while, and I think it's a good time to talk about the temptations. Uh, one of the things a guy might be tempted to do is to just put a wrench on the back side of this bolt and start screwing it in because it'll the threads will bite on this uh, you know engine mount material and start coming through slowly but we could really damage the threads on our bolt that way okay here's my next attempt I put a large pry bar or maybe you could use a uh, long half inch extension or something through there uh, and then wrapped a ratcheting tie down strap through it and essentially this is what I'm doing I don't need much there that's it that did it it was not a lot of pressure actually 
sometimes you just got to be a little bit smarter than the project in front of you. Uh, you know, again though, you can get yourself in a lot of dangerous situations doing this. At the end of the day, you got to have kind of a sense for the physics of what you're working with and, uh, you know, be able to imagine those forces and then imagine for a second when those forces go wrong and end up in your face. Um, like, you know, it's not really quite a, a good analogy, but earlier when I lifted the engine in here, I had my glasses hanging here and now I've scratched the lenses. So not thinking things through does have consequences. And we're all done down here. Up here we got this little tiddly wink and what he does uh, how do is uh, here all right I think this through here pretty darn sure gotta think of how that's supposed to function in any way that's helpful I think that's no so that's up against there I can I can't see that being correct and of course, flipping it around is not right because the thing is way the hell out here. So I feel like that has to be right. Just don't know why the interference here. 14 millimeter. This bracket here, or tiddlywink 2, uh, is not in the right position. I gotta fix that. This is supposed to be oriented down like this, and all of your um, throttle and choke cable go through it. So, that's how that goes. And then we have these guys, which have a nut that goes behind here, and it actually fits into the molding of the casting here. So you just slide it in behind and get it threaded. You might be able to see on the other side when I put this in. And this is a tricky fit. But you can get your fingers in the back side here. There, I don't know if you can see that in there. But I'm going to hold it while I bring the bolt into it. Tight. There's probably a torque spec for this, but I'm guessing it's somewhere in the 18 pound foot range. That is a guess. Check your manual. This guy down below is 17 millimeter. That's a mounted engine. A um, couple of more things to button up. Ah, first mistake I made. This should have been on the engine. Whoops, goes this way. Should have been on the engine before I put it in. I'm gonna see if I can finagle this on there. Uh, boy, wish me luck that there's a clearance for that. Otherwise, the whole engine's coming out. Mmm, perhaps. <laughs> it's going to be pretty tricky. Okay, now having gotten that on there with the engine in place, I'm not sure if it would be better to do it now, uh, you know, or before you put the engine in because it was nice to have a clear sight line into that u-joint when i was putting the engine in um and i got it in there you know it wasn't that big a deal finagling it past a little gap like this but now that it is in there we got to get it over the flange of this seal on the front that hooks up there and then inside here, we need to put on this special pin, which I have to clean up. This has gotten dirty. 
um, this pin holds that assembly together. Let me clean this. So I gotta push this forward. The trick here, now you can't see anything because I have this on where it's supposed to be, but the trick here is to grab it and then be pulling it forward while you're rotating one hand is holding the whole thing back while the other is trying to move it forward. And you can't get in from back here. Now I'm just going to see if I can get my pin. There's a, a groove around the final drive shaft on the engine that this pin fits into. Well, I must be in it or that wouldn't have gone in. Okay. Let me see if I can show you that. There it is in place and it's 10 millimeter to tighten it up. Nope, it's 12 millimeter. You know, now that it's together, I can turn the engine and rotate that bolt to where a 12 mil socket goes on it nicely with the, an extension. And that's a lot easier way to get that on. And a couple more loose ends to button up. This is the uh, coolant overflow tube that goes on the radiator up here. I want to do that in a way to where I can actually access the clamp though. Um, here you have a blue with red stripe wire that is on the engine and here goes to the wiring harness. Um, you want to get these connected. Bum, bum, bum. So blue and red to blue and red. Oh, and who's down here? Hello. Blue with green. You got pinched a little. In some funky way. Uh huh. stator wires out of the way and now that blue and green fits up here that's for ignition also so we'll go ahead and hook that up because ignition is not part of the video I'm doing the stator stuff comes later all right sorry long roundabout there but get those two guys hooked up so that's where I'm going to leave it for this video, you guys. The engine's in. Um, I've got a lot of wiring to do, and that feels to me like another stator video, because that's really about wiring the stator. This is just about getting that big hunk of metal back up into the frame and connected. Um, so thank you for watching through that. Stay tuned for a uh, wiring of the new stator and a wiring and installation of a new uh, regulator rectifier because the one that was in this bike tested bad uh, probably the bad stator killed it and uh, what else can i say uh, thanks to anders for all the videos he's still doing on around on a bike uh, and for plugging my channel i love anders channel uh, he travels all over Europe and does a lot of dual sport off-road uh, stuff. He's, he's really fun to watch uh, for me. Check him out around on a bike on YouTube. And if you guys like motorcycles and custom builds, check out my book, Creating Mr. Corton. It is available on urbanmonktv.com where you'll find a link to the Amazon page where that is for sale. And if you like this video and this CX500 series, or any of my other videos, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to become an urban monk. Thanks for watching.